Is congestion pricing fair? Well, let's narrow the question. First, there are two applications, pricing old lanes and pricing new lanes. With old lanes, we take existing free lanes and turn them into priced lanes to speed things up. With new lanes, we leave the old lanes free, but build new priced lanes that pay for themselves. Pricing new lanes helps drivers who choose to use them, but it doesn't really affect drivers who stay in the free lanes. So when we price new lanes, fairness isn't really at stake. All right, but is congestion pricing fair if we price old lanes? Well, we got to look at two definitions of fairness, a fair share and a fair slice. A fair share is like, dude, you drank the beer, pay your fair share. In other words, costs are linked to benefits. So if you pay more, you get more. And if you get more, you pay more. That's why a majority of Americans think it's fair that high-income people can eat steak, live in mansions, and go to Swiss medical spas if they fork over the cash. Under congestion pricing, the more you drive, the more you pay. So congestion pricing definitely passes this test of fairness. But there's also a fair slice, as in you've had some pie, now cut your brother a fair slice. In other words, costs and benefits should be spread out. Now, this doesn't mean complete equality. Just that no one's cup should go empty if their neighbor's cup runneth over. That's why a majority of Americans think it's fair that the government helps low-income people buy food and housing and health care, and why they think it's unfair if congestion pricing makes low-income people's trips from home to work unaffordable. What if I do care about low-income people's trips? In fact, what if that is a deal breaker? I don't know, dude, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe congestion pricing isn't fair. Oh. Okay. Congestion pricing was unfair. I thought I'd settle the matter, but more questions than answers remained. Who am I? Where am I? What is fair? Until one night, I dreamt. I was playing cards against the most unusual of opponents. Death. Death humiliated me. Then he showed me a coin. It's gone. No, it was there all along. The money doesn't go away. Lewis Lee here, narrator. The money doesn't go away. Who is this? The money doesn't go away. You have my attention. Well, I had been thinking like, I'm a driver, I pay the government, and they let me drive in the road. The end. So if you wrote out the pros and cons, for pros, it'd be fast trips. And for cons, it'd be expensive. But that's actually wrong. Because when I pay, the money doesn't go away. The government can use the money to buy bridge repairs or new buses or tax cuts, which benefit me. And I get to drive on the road. So expensive isn't, re so expensive isn't really a con. Unless I also add bridge repairs, 
new buses or tax cuts to the pros side. You see what I'm getting at? I'm one step ahead of you. For fairness sake, the government can buy things that specifically benefit low-income people. Like, we could cut the sales tax. The sales tax soaks up more of your income the less income you make. Exactly. Dan, are you on board with congestion pricing? Look, I never said all hands on deck. I'm just throwing you a lifeline. 